something else or do we what do we do all right can I get all of us not this in section but all of us to come in this round part and hold hands together please all right guys hold hands together come on stretch out and make a circle I don't think we would make one around the whole entire sanctuary but we can make one around
Good evening, everyone. On our, at our last message together, we looked at a message entitled, The Early Rain. And now we will look at <clears throat> the latter rain. Very, very significant and special messages. Father in heaven, we're thankful for this opportunity to look into your word. And we ask now in the name of Jesus that as we open your word that you would open our understanding. Give us the ability to grasp the deep and weighty matters of Scripture that they might become reality in our experience because they are already a reality in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just in review, in our last study when we looked at the early reign of the Holy Spirit, we examined how that as soon as we are surrendered to Christ, just so soon we are justified. The word justification means to be cleared of guilt. And just so soon as we are justified, the experience of sanctification begins. And just so soon as justification and sanctification begins, God looks upon us as though we had never sinned. That's perfection. Our job then is by the grace of God to maintain our spiritual correct connection and to stay surrendered to Christ. And that's what the adversary is always trying to do, is trying to get us out of our surrendered position. Go with me to Genesis chapter 5, Genesis chapter 5, and we're going to look at the first individual that received the full outpouring of the Holy Spirit and was translated, and that individual's name was Enoch. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24. And, and the reason these, these texts are so important is because there's a great deal of individuals throughout Christendom, for some reason, believe that perfection of character is impossible. Now what happens is, is the first thing that people do is, uh, and I find it so intriguing, that they will come and ask me, preacher, are you perfect? But that's not the question to be asked. Because Job says, if I were perfect, yet my own lips would condemn me. That's what Job says. But it's very interesting that God has declared various individuals in the Bible as perfect. So the question is, what sin is it that's bigger than God? I just want you to name one. Name one sin that's bigger than God. The only sin that's bigger than God is the sin that we refuse to give up. That's the only one. So look, notice now Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24. And the scripture says, 
And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So God saw that Enoch's walk with him, was he was so close to God that he said, it's not necessary for you to be on the planet anymore. You just need to come on to glory with me. And so, beloved, we live in a day and time where throughout all Christendom, there's this battle against a concept of the receiving of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, therefore eliminating the possibility of a person being perfect in Christ. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Still talking about Enoch. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, and I would read in your hearing, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 11, verses 5 and 6. And the scripture says, by faith Enoch was translated. That means he went to heaven without experiencing death. So you have to understand this concept. This, there's a principle lying here. All right. The only thing that causes us to causes it to be necessary for us to experience death is sin. So individuals that have victory over sin, it's not necessary for them to experience death unless God has them pegged for martyrdom. So there's three ways to be sealed. You can be sealed in death, you can be sealed as a martyr, or you can be sealed as one of the 144,000. Now, we won't get into the battle or the theological debate as to whether or not it is literal or symbolic. You can make it whatever you want to make it, but one thing we do know, that the 144,000 will perfectly reproduce the character of Christ. And that takes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So notice what it says now. We're still in Hebrews 11. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if we don't believe that we can have victory over sin in Christ, you don't have enough faith to go to heaven either. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Matthew chapter 5, in verse 48, we read this text. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So why is it that there are so many pulpits in Christendom that where well, the ministers are opposed to victory over sin, it is because they, not, they are not themselves possibly experiencing victory over sin. They're in love with sin. And we need to be in love with righteousness. Which one do you love? It's a choice that we all have to make. Go with me to Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Very, very interesting area in Scripture. The Scripture says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Have you ever studied the blotting out of sin? You ever, you ever heard that preached from the pulpit? That's another rare subject. When the times of refreshing, the times of the refreshing is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which started in 1844. 
so we could we we can be we can be preparing for receiving the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But here's the catch: we must be actively participating in putting away sin, cooperating with the Holy Spirit, striving to come into harmony with Him, asking Him, what is it in my life that's not in harmony with you, so that when He tells us, we can agree with Him, because holiness is agreement with God. How can two walk together except they be agreed? If you disagree with God, when God tells you something, or God tells me something about myself, then it proves we are not holy. Notice what it says now. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So repentance is always made known by reformation. So if you repent of drinking, you don't drink anymore. If you repent of being a glutton, you don't overeat anymore. If you repent of being a sugar-holic, I'm pausing on purpose. If you repent of being a sugar-holic, you're not consumed by that anymore. If you repent of being lustful, then you have control over your eyes, and you don't do that anymore. If you repent of being a temptress, you stop wearing provocative clothing and you don't do that anymore. We must have repentance, but repentance must be preached and must be lived by those that say that they are ministers of the gospel. Going a little deeper now. Repent ye therefore. Remember repentance is a gift. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Conversion means that you have been born again. It means that you have been changed. It means that you now have received the divine nature. It means that you have put away the old man or the old woman. It means that all things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ. The things that you once loved, you now hate. And the things that you once hated, you now love. I remember when I hated this book. I remember when you couldn't get me to read a Bible for any reason. I remember when I told my mother, there's no need in you giving me one of those things because I am not going to read it. I remember burning up the literature that my mother sent to me in my wood-burning stove. I remember. But I also remember when the Holy Spirit pierced my heart. I remember when, when God let me know that I was on a fast track to hell. And he snatched me off that track and put me on heaven's train. I've been riding that train ever since. So now let's, let's look at this phrase now, that your sins may be blotted out. What is the blotting out of sin? Contrary to the teaching, in most of Christianity, they believe that once you have repented that your sins are gone, and it's, it's, yes, your sins are gone and forgiven, but they're still on the record books in heaven. They are on the record books in heaven until the work of atonement is completed. Once the work of atonement is completed, then your sins are blotted out of the record books in heaven, and Christ takes those sins and places them on the head of the adversary, Satan himself, because he is the originator of sin. And then at that point, you can no longer bring any guilt to your mind because your sins have been forgiven and blotted out, and you think about them, and you're trying to find, well, did I get everything right? You can't pull it up because you already did. This is what God desires to do for us. So, beloved, we owe it to ourselves to be in a place where in such fellowship we hear such messages that challenge us to complete holiness and sanctification. Going on a little further now. Go with me to 
Isaiah 44 and 43, it talks about this same principle, this principle of the blotting out of sin. The blotting out of sin takes it off the record books. It puts us in a position where we can finally recognize our complete and absolute innocence before God. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 25. Isaiah 43 and verse 25. And the scripture says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. So God can choose to put the sins, your sins, away from his mind. What is it that causes God to keep on remembering our sins is because we refuse to give them up. Remember, the sin against the Holy Spirit is the persistent refusal to respond to the invitation to repent. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44, verse 22. This is what will happen when that takes place, when the blotting out of sins takes place. This will be the record. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Now, why is it that it has two words to describe sin in this text? One is transgression, and one is sin. The word sin means, coming from the Greek, it comes from the word homatos, homatone, which means one who is trying to, to hit a target, but they miss the mark. So that's us falling short. Transgression is different. It has two definitions. One definition of transgression is complete rebellion. When you rebel, you, you know, you, 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 God tells you, go this way. You say, I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. God tells you, leave pork alone. You say, I'm going to eat all, of, all the barbecue I want. That's rebellion. God tells you, uh, uh, be, be, be pure, and, and you say, well, as long as I love them, it's all right for, for us to be intimate. Oh, that's rebellion. Then the other definition of transgression is sinning through ignorance. Some things we don't know. Go with me to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Back in the New Testament, Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. And the scripture says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So now let's, let's look at this, how this takes place. So we are converted. We have surrendered ourselves to Christ. We are justified. We are sanctified. And we continue to walk with the Holy Spirit through the sanctification process until every defect, every fault, every sin, every wrong in the life is no more. You believe it's possible? By God's grace, yes it is. So when you get to that point, then you receive the full outpouring of the early rain or the early rain of the Holy Spirit without measure. When you receive the early rain of the Holy Spirit without measure, that prepares you for the latter rain. You get the latter rain, then you are able to give the loud cry. You are sealed. You are protected. You are, you are protected from the seven last plagues. You have a glorified a character. You are prepared to go through the time of trouble. The work of the atonement is now Finished in your case. That's where we are, beloved. We must be preparing. We must be in churches that help us to prepare. We must be under ministries that help us to prepare. Elders should help us to prepare. Deacons should help us to prepare. If they don't, that's, guess what? They, are, should, they should not be in those positions. We have lowered the standard of righteousness for far too long. 
Too many ministers are in the pulpit that's living in blatant sin. And we sit there and say, well, it's the pastor. We can't do anything. Oh, yes, you can. The local church has the power to sit them down. You may not be able to stop their pay, but you can show no sit them down. But because we have a papal mentality, we think that they're untouchable. You can ask me any question you want to. I ain't going to guarantee I have all the answers, but I know somebody that does. His name is Jesus. He got all the answers. Every time I do a Bible study with somebody, when I start, that's the first thing I tell them. I don't have all the answers, but I got enough answers to get you off this planet. I know enough of this Bible to guarantee that if you follow the principles of the Word of God, you will get off of this planet and into glory. But you must be willing to align yourself with the principles of heaven. Let's go to Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18. And then when we look at this angel, this some people call this angel the fourth angel. This is the, this is the angel or the message that combines with the third angel's message. And the third angel's message is the message that tells us, that, that, that tells us don't, in other words, in so many words, don't go back into sin. Don't be part of Babylon. Don't get the mark. Don't bow down to the image. Don't listen to the beast earth is going to be brightened by the character of Christ. Why? Because the character of Christ is going to be in all his people. Why? Because they have received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They have received the latter rain. They have, they have received the, the, the finishing touch in their Christian experience. They finally now have complete, unbroken, uninterrupted victory over sin because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And they go through the earth and they work mighty, mighty works and miracles and deeds and proclaim the Sabbath more fully. The, the, the pen of inspiration says that the arguments have been presented and now people respond under the moving of the Holy Spirit. So people that you never thought would accept, they're going to accept. Notice now. Notice the message. Revelation 18 and verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. So of course we know the capital of Babylon is in Vatican City, Rome. Fallen is fallen and has become the habitation of devils. For all fallen and false religions is where the devil likes to hang out at. Worldliness in the church invites the devil. Habitation of devils, a hole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Notice now, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath. Of her fornication. Why, why wine? Because wine is prepared through the aging process. So we're talking about an old, old false doctrine. Old, old false doctrine that when you die, you really don't die. You go to heaven or you go to hell or you go to purgatory or you get reincarnated. All of which is a lie. When you die, you go to the grave. When you die, you go to the dust. When you die, you don't walk around anymore. When you die, you don't have no more memory. When you die, you can't come back and talk to anybody. So if you see somebody that looked like uh, uh, something, that looked like somebody that died, you might as well know that that's a demon of hell just trying to trick you. A whole lot of people have seen things. They say, well, why, 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 why did I see my grandmother? That wasn't your grandmother. Living, the scripture says the living know that they shall die. That's in, that's in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 9. The, the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. The other thing that they teach, that Babylon teaches, is that there is an everlasting hell. That when you, you die, you go and you burn and burn. And, and that's how they preach. They say, you're going to burn. Ah, you're going to burn some more. And then God's going to turn you over. And then you're going to burn some more. And they lie. Either they lie or they don't know, know no better. All right? 
But if you read Malachi carefully, Malachi chapter 3, it says, the wicked shall be ashes under the soles of the righteous feet. And so when I do evangelistic meetings, I bring, I bring me a little something that I can burn, and I put it down there in a, in a bucket or something, and I light it on fire, and I'm preaching on hell. And then when it burns out, I t- call somebody up, the, up front and say, would you light these ashes on fire? Ashes don't burn. Same thing in Ezekiel 28. It talks about the devil and God says, I will bring thee to ashes. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Remember that? That's where it came from. It came from the scriptures. For all nations have drunk of the wine. The wine. False doctrine. Baptizing babies. Praying to Mary. Confessing your sins to the to the priest or confessing your sins to the pastor. Don't bring your sins to me. That ain't your job to confess to me. You need to take them sins to Jesus. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The kings of the earth are hanging out with Rome. The kings of the earth have made money because of the things that they do for her. So you think about it, something to notice. Now notice, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The word delicacy means luxury. So how is it that the kings and, and the merchants get rich? Because somebody got to make the pews that's in them big old rich churches. And I mean, you, have, you know, this, this right here is, is really a plain church. You, you haven't seen, you have to go in some of those cathedrals. And the ceilings, ceilings be 50 feet high. Have all kind of es- exquisite Paintings and stuff up on the ceiling and special lights and chandeliers and all of that stuff and, and special chairs trimmed in brass and trimmed in gold and, and all that kind of stuff. You haven't been in no, no fancy churches. You go in those cathedrals, your mouth is, and, and then somebody got to make the clothes that them priests wear. Somebody got to make those shoes. One of the popes, they buried him in a pair of $1,500 shoes. Why in the world would you put a pair, a pair of $1,500 shoes down in the grave? That's where we are, beloved. But the only way to escape the contamination of Babylon is to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Notice what it says in verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So God is calling people out of all fallen religions, all fallen churches, all false churches, all churches and religions that have individuals that won't preach the truth not going to tell the truth get paid to tell a lie how do I know because my first year in ministry somebody came and pro- approached me they said we'll start you off with this much money and a new Cadillac and we'll take care of it. and I said well what about what I preach they said oh no 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 we tell you what to preach I said no deal when I was in the world I served, served the devil 100% now that I'm with Jesus, I'm going to do my best to serve him 100%. The old folks sang a song that went, 99 won't do. You got to be 100. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Let's see. No, no, no. Let's don't go to Revelation 14. Let's go to, let's go to James chapter 5. James. James. James chapter 5. James. James, James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. And the scripture says, Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. The, the husbandman, that's, that's the farmer. Okay, that's, that's Jesus. Jesus is the one that works on us. He's the one that works on this soil because, you see, we are made out of dust. So he works down in this soil. He works on your heart. He works on your brain. He works on your nerves so that you can, so that you can get right and stay right. Behold, the husband, husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth. What is the fruit of the earth? It's our full maturity. It's when we have the fruit of the Spirit. It's that when we go out and win souls, all of that is fruit. You've got to produce some fruit. 
you in the church and you're not a soul winner, then either you're not converted or you sleep. You need to be knocking on the door or giving out a track or, or baking a loaf of bread or doing some medical missionary work or making some granola for somebody or helping some poor per person or feeding the poor or clothing the naked. You got to be doing something for Jesus so people will be drawn to you so then you can point them to Christ. And that's why there are so many dead Christians is because they don't tell anybody. They're trying to be Christians. They're trying to be Secret agent Christians, ain't no such thing. People need to know. And have long patience for it till he received the early and the latter rain. So Jesus is waiting for us to receive both the early and the latter rain. We need both of them. We have got to receive both the early and the latter rain. Now, let me tell you how God is going to purify the church. Because a lot of people are burdened about the condition of the church. You don't need to be burdened about the condition of the church because it don't belong to man. Did you hear what I said? It don't belong to people. Now, I know pastors get in the pulpit and they say, this is my church. And long as I'm in here, it's going to be done this way. Well, huh. You better look at your Bible again, because you didn't spill no blood for that church. Jesus did 2,000 years ago. So every church in the land belongs to Jesus. It don't belong to man. Man might think it belongs to them. But notice what it says. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Notice what it says now. Verses 10, 11, and 12. And then we're going to go into Joel, and we're going to finish. Now the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Now in Bible, trees are two things. A tree can represent an individual or a tree can represent a nation. So right now he's addressing the Jewish nation. But then we get to the end of time, he's also addressing his people. Now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, and therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. It means cut down, chopped down, and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water. This is John preaching now. Unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So God, Jesus, is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with trials and tribulations and tests and trouble and sorrow and loss and persecution and maybe martyrdom and maybe even death. Choose which one you want. I don't know about you. I put in my application for the 144,000. Did you? I haven't heard back from them, but I put it in. Notice now, verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. You know what the floor is? The floor is the church. He's going to purge it. So if you, if you think you're traveling undercover, if you think you're sinning and nobody knows it, if you, if you do wrong and you pull your curtains down and, and, you, and you close the door and you, and you do it in the dark, the angel is right there watching your writing with somebody that you ain't supposed to be with, doing things you ain't supposed to do. And the angel gets ready and, they, they, you know, they got a tag team thing because when that angel leaves, another one comes. That angel goes and goes into the record room in glory and begins to write against your name and my name. Write down everything we did, the motive behind what we did, how long we did it, how much time we wasted, whether or not we studied our Bible, whether or not we prayed, whether or not when the Holy Ghost told you to give that man a dollar and you say, I ain't giving him nothing, they wrote it all down. They ain't missing a beat. He would thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. That's talking about the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Go with me to Joel. We'll finish in the book of Joel. Joel. 
Joel is a prophecy of the purification of the church and what God is going to do, what God is getting ready to do, and how we need to be in complete cooperation with him. Go with me to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, and we're starting in verse 12. Joel chapter 2, starting in verse 12. The scripture says, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. That's the key, beloved. We must be surrendered. Lord, you can have all of me. I want you to have control of my heart. I want you to have control of my eyes. I want you to have control of my nose. I want you to have control of my mouth and my appetite. I want you to have control of my ears. I want you to have control of my hands and what I touch. I want you to have control of my feet and where I go. I want you to have control of my closet and what I put on my body. I want you to have control of my my cabinets and what I eat. I want you to have control of my refrigerator and when I go in and out of it. I want you to have control of my automobile and how I drive it. God wants to have control of all of us. Not part. Everything. Turn to me with all your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. Follow this now because you're going to learn something. Follow this very closely because this, these texts are, are getting ready to teach us how to worship. There's a worship plan that the devil has that he's brought to, into many churches. And that worship plan is a plan to cause you to forget about God. Well, you get so happy in church. And you get so carried away in church until you forget where you at. That's not, the way, that's not the way the day of atonement is supposed to be. We're in the day of atonement. Notice now, verse 13, rend your heart and not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of evil. In other words, if we turn to God, God oftentimes can change his mind because sometimes he has planned to take care of us and we get straight and God said, okay, I won't do it. The same thing he did with Nineveh. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. God told Nineveh to preach against Nineveh. Nineveh was going to be destroyed in 40 days, but Nineveh repented. Nineveh fasted, and they got things right, and God said, okay, I'll spare them. Nineveh didn't get destroyed until 40 years later. Notice now, verse 14, who knoweth if he will return and repent? Now remember, God's repentance is not like yours and mine. God not repenting for doing wrong. That means God changed his mind. If he will repent and leave a blessing behind him, in other words, he'll come by you and bless you. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord our God. So he'll, he'll give you what you need and then you can turn around and give him an offering. Now watch this. Verse 15, 16, and 17. These are the conditions upon which if we comply, we will receive the blessings of heaven. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Now the scripture says in Isaiah 58, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their sins and the house of Jacob their transgression, the house of Jacob their sins. That's that's what's supposed to take place from the ministry. We're supposed to preach two things. We're supposed to preach Christ and we're supposed to preach the straight cutting truths of the Bible. If you preach only Christ, people think they can do anything. And you preach only straight-cutting truth, they feel like the standard is so high that they can't reach it. That's why it must be a a, a, a mix. Two tracks that lead straight to glory. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Notice now, follow this carefully. Call a solemn assembly. Notice it didn't say call for a celebration worship. It didn't say call for the scantily dressed sisters up front wiggling themselves around to the music. And the brothers come into church trying to get a blessing and instead they end up leaving the church full of lust because you didn't have the right clothes on and had the nerve to think you was called to sing for God looking like a hooker. And the pastor said, yo, you look nice today. He need to be popped in the lips by somebody. One of them old sisters, one of them grandmas. Yeah, y'all pop it. In the old days, you know what they would do? You, you got up and walked around the church and, and you, you wasn't dressed like the old sisters would say, sit down, honey, everybody sees you, sit down. Then they would bring a modesty cloth and throw it over your legs. 
But we don't get to the point now where we're afraid. We're afraid to speak. I'm afraid not to speak. Because the ministers will be beaten ten times worse than everybody else. We will be punished ten times worse if we don't live right and preach right. So I must warn you. I must warn you. Because I may not ever see you again. This group may not ever meet again. So I must set the record straight that it's time now to get things right. Don't listen to your friends and say, well, it ain't nothing wrong if, if, if the music in church sound like Marvin Gaye. Oh, yeah, it is. It ain't nothing wrong if the music in church sound like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, yes, it is. You better go back and study them people and find out who they got their music from. You're talking to an old jazz musician. At the age of 18, I was an accomplished jazz musician getting ready to break the glass ceiling. And God said, no, nope, come on down. Because he knew I was going to self-destruct. Watch this now, verse 16. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. How does the congregation get sanctified? By the, by the ministry preaching the truth. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of a, con out of a closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Don't sound like the music dancing. Weep in between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. Give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, they say among the people, where is their God? Now, these are the conditions we just read to the fulfilling of the promise I'm getting ready to read to you. Here's the promise, verse 18, verse 19. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil. Corn is another, another word in the scriptures for wheat. Wheat is another symbol for people or souls. God said, I'll send you souls. I'll build your church up. I will add to your church membership. Wine is another symbol for good doctrine. And oil is for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. He said he'll send all that if we get ourselves in line. Yea, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. You're going to be satisfied with new souls coming into the church and getting converted. You will be satisfied with the wine of the word of God, which is real doctrine. You will be satisfied with oil, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army. Who's that? That's Babylon. And drive him into a barren land and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea and his stink shall come up. Why his stink? Because God said, I'm going to put him to death. God going to wipe out Babylon. He's not playing. And his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Notice what it says in verse 21 now. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. When? When we are in line. When? When we have put away sin. When? When we cooperate with God. When? When we stop playing with God. When? When we stop watching TV, when we should be reading our Bibles. Now, as for me, I ain't telling you what to do, but for me, I don't even own a TV. I don't have time. Because when I look at where we are in earth's history, what's going on in the planet and what's going on in the church, I know I better be getting my house in order. Notice what it says. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring in the tree, beareth her fruit in the fruit tree, and the vine yield her strength. Notice what it says now. Watch what it's getting ready to say. Watch it. Pay very close attention. Verse 23 and 24. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, you children of the church. Are you a child of the church? Are you a child of God? Are you a child of the kingdom? Are you, are you cooperating with the Holy Spirit? Do you have a conversion experience? Then you are one of the children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. So whatever portion of the Holy Spirit you have right now, that's called a moderate portion. In other words, God is saying, you haven't seen nothing yet. God wants to do greater for us than what he did for the apostles. 
He has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So you're going to get a double blessing. You're going to get the early rain, which is the same as the former rain, the early rain and the full measure of the early rain or the early rain without measure, and then the latter rain on top of that which is the complete outpouring of the Holy Spirit without measure. You know, when you have that kind of power, do you know, and, it's, and, 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 if, and if it is not God's will for you to lay down and die, that means bullets can't do nothing with you. That means bombs can't do nothing with you. That means knives can't do nothing with you. That means viruses and pestilence and, and, and man-made pandemics can't do nothing with you. All these people running around scared. They scared to death. Why are you scared? Are you a Christian? Stuff that people make in a laboratory. Y'all ain't bigger than God. Y'all ain't never been bigger than God. Keep on, keep on. They don't know. It's going to backfire on them. It's coming back, it's coming back around. You remember what the scriptures say? He that rolleth a stone, himself shall, it shall be rolled upon. He that diggeth a pit shall fall himself into the pit. Keep on digging your holes. You're going to be burying yourself. Notice what it says, verse 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Remember the floor is another name for church and wheat is another name for souls. The church is going to be full. You may be saying, man, we can't get people in our church. Get yourself in line and people will come in. Get yourself right. Start knocking on some doors. Hey, hey uh, I was just wondering... Um, I just wanted to read a text to you. How you doing today? Uh, 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 could I just read just one text to you out of Revelation chapter 14? <laughs> You'd be surprised what happened. Notice what it says. The floor shall be full of wheat and the vats. Some Bibles say F-A-T-S and some Bibles say V-A-T-S. The vat means a container. Your life is a container. And God wants to fill your container with the oil of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, as, as, as you cooperate with God in giving up sin, Holy Ghost comes in, sin goes out. Holy Ghost comes in, sin comes out. Holy Ghost comes in, sin comes out. Until you're so full of the Holy Ghost till sin can't get in. Sin shut out. That shall overflow with wine, that your life shall overflow with wine. Wine is another word for, for doctrine and oil. That's the Holy Ghost. And I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the years that you have wasted, the years that you was in the club, the years you was running around, the years you was in the street, the years you was out there smoking dope, the years you was out there doing drugs, the years you was out when, with the wrong people at the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing. God said, I'll give it back to you. That's what it says now. Verse 26, ye shall eat and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, for he has dealt wondrously. The word wondrously means miraculously. The greatest miracle is conversion. That's your greatest miracle. And my people shall never be ashamed, and ye shall know that I am the Lord in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine coming home and, 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 your, and your kids in the house and they filled with the Holy Ghost? Can you imagine that? Notice now. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. I guess I'm in that number. <laughs> Your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and the handmaids in old days, I will pour out my spirit. And I, I, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. And before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. So this already took place. November 1st, 1755, the Elizabeth earthquake. May 19th, 1780, the great dark day. It got dark. Then that night, the, root, the moon rose up full and it became yellow. And then after a while, it turned blood red. November 13th, 1833, the falling of the stars. All of that has been fulfilled. Last text and we'll close. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Delivered from what? 
delivered from sin. Whatever it is, no matter how long it's been in your life, if you don't want it, God can give you victory over it. When I came to Oakwood, way back in 1977, my life was so dark. I had been a jazz musician and I had to walk the, I had to walk the sidewalks of Oakwood and pray and say, Lord, if you don't save me, you know I'm going to hell. Because there were so many things in my life that needed fixing. I was still in love with that old crazy music. Nobody knew it, but I had my drums right there with me. But Lord, the Lord never let me play them. Because the man that trained me was trained by a wish doctor. Every club I went in, they, 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 they said, get a, get a percussionist, a solo. Everyone I wanted. The man that trained me, he would not play in the same club. He didn't want to play in the same clubs I played in. He played in one. Other than that, he didn't want to play in the same club. God snatched me out of all of that. He delivered me from myself. Your greatest enemy is not the devil. Your greatest enemy is not the church. Your greatest enemy is not organizations and groups. Your greatest enemy is in the mirror. That's your greatest enemy. You get victory over that enemy, the devil can't do nothing with you. When self is dead, Satan will find no chord in you that will respond to his music. He'll be plucking and plucking. He'll say, I don't understand. I used to be able to get him to dance. I used to be able to get him to do dirty dancing. I used to be able to get them to do dirty things. I used to be able to get them to eat what I wanted them to eat, but they don't respond. I used to be able to get them to watch my television shows. They don't do it no more. I used to be able to get them to watch the wrong kind of pictures on the phone and on the, and on the iPad. They won't do it no more. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> these people have been delivered. But you got to want it. God wants to give us the latter rain. But in order for us to receive the latter rain, we must be actively involved in putting sin away. You can't be holding on to them old albums and them old records that you know ain't worth two cents. You can't be holding on to those old clothes that you know that's one size too small for you. You can't do that. I used to wear platform shoes. There ain't nowhere in the world I'm putting a pair of platform shoes on my feet no more. I used to wear sequel shirts because I was an entertainer. I ain't wearing no sequel shirts no more. All kind of light color suits. So, you know, when you go somewhere, everybody's seeing you because you got the big old bright, they're like looking like a light when you walk in. I ain't wearing no suits like that no more. I don't want to be seen. I want Jesus to be seen. There shall be deliverance. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, talking about the church, shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said. In the remnant. Remember, we've been talking about the remnant. In the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So the question this evening is, you a member of the remnant? Are you putting away sin? Are you cooperating with God? Or do you love this world? Do you love it so much you just want to stay here? Are you praying, Lord, can you delay your coming until I get married? Don't pray like that. Lord, can you delay your coming until I get me a girlfriend or a wife? Uh -uh. Lord, can you delay your coming until I get a better job? Lord, can you delay your coming until I get a nice house? Lord, can you delay your coming until I get me a Maserati? <laughs> Don't pray like that. You need to be praying, even so, come, Lord Jesus, and help me to be ready. For this method, you will need a computer with so iTunes beloved, installed and a cable to... We need so much to help us today, and God wants to help. How many of you want to be helped? 
I must make an appeal. So if you raise your hand and you want prayer, would you come down front? I'm coming down front because I want prayer too. I'm, asp- I'm responding to, to, the own, to my own appeal. Because I'm not getting ready to proclaim to you that I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm not getting ready to tell you that I'm, that I'm ready for them to cut my lights off, cut my gas off, disconnect my, dis- disconnect my water, and disconnect my gas, and, 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 and take everything I got. I'm not going to confess to you that I'm ready. I'm not ready for an angel to say, this spot right here in the grass, this is where you're sleeping tonight. Sleep there? No, Lord. I'm not confessing to you that I'm ready for that. But I am confessing to you that I'm willing to be made willing. Now, beloved, you know if everyone, everybody in here became a soul winner, you know what will happen? Time of trouble will come right quick. Everybody in here become a soul winner. Everybody that can do something. Whether you give out a book, make a loaf of bread. Why are you making this loaf of bread? Because I'm concerned about your soul. Huh? Why are you giving me this track? Because Jesus loves you. That's what we got to do, saints. Because time don't run out. Don't you think for one minute all this stuff that's taking place on the world is a coincidence? All this stuff has been planned many, many, many years ago while we was playing church. And the adversary is saying, play a little longer. That's what he's saying. Play, please play a little bit longer. You're going to be on my side. Why does he want you and me to be destroyed? Because if we repent of all of our sins, all our sins are put on him and he burns for it. But if we don't repent, we burn for our own sins. And hell is not the worst part of being lost. The worst part of being lost is coming up a thousand years too late and looking at the city. And seeing your friends inside the city and they're looking at you. They say, you out there with Hitler and Mussolini and Stalin and Pol Pot and Chiang Kai-shek and all those wicked, all them drug dealers and all them pimps that wouldn't repent and all them prostitutes that wouldn't get right and all them musicians that we used to listen to and all of them out there and all of them well in the morning because they know they're getting ready to face the fire. It don't have to be us, Amen. I'm going to kneel. You don't have to. But I want to pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, your people have responded to your message. Lord, they have not responded to me because I can't save them. They have responded to your voice. So we ask in the name of Jesus that you would do for each one of us that which we desperately need for you to do for us. We need new hearts, new mind, new character, new way of thinking, new way of living. We need to be, Lord, so close to you that the demons of hell will get scared when we come around. That's what we need, Lord. Only you can do it. We surrender ourselves to thee anew and afresh, and we ask that from this day forward, our lives would be different. We would go home and study and pray and meditate and that we would show the love of Jesus. And if we don't show the love of Jesus, we would say to the people, I'm sorry. I need to say that again. I didn't say that right. So bless us to this end, not because we're worthy, but because we pray in and through the mighty and the magnificent and the wonderful name of Christ. Let us all say together, amen. likewise with the same mind that he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the lust in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of God I want to thank Pastor Martin
for that powerful spirit message and for everyone else that has came up and shared the message and the burden that God has placed upon their hearts. This is the benediction. And at this time, what we want to do is we want to thank everyone for coming out. We want to thank everyone for being a part of this camp meeting. This camp meeting was called Preparation for the King 2022. And we believe that these messages that we've heard has prepared us to meet Christ. But don't let it just stop here. Keep searching, keep studying, keep soul winning until Christ comes or you're dead in the grave. Before we do the benediction, because I want the benediction to be kind of special because there was a lot of planning that went into this camp meeting. There was a lot of effort that went into this camp meeting. And so we just can't commend one person. We want to have everyone that was involved in this camp meeting, the behind